I explained what you guys just received in your packets there. Um, one, one of the things you received is the full presentation that I'm getting ready to give, along with all the speaking parts. Uh, you also received an insert from Deanna, the health department. They created a pretty much a little thing based on PASCO and around the food system that kind of correlates, so we thought we'd include that as well. The most important thing I want you guys to look at right now is there's a there's a one portion of our slide that's that's in there and it has lines underneath that's for notes to be taken. So I'm gonna ask that you save the questions till the end because I'm likely gonna answer whatever questions you have through our presentation. But I want to make sure that those questions are addressed if you guys do have something that comes up. And with that, we'll start off with this slide. These are the stakeholders. These are the people that the Food Policy Advisory Council aims to connect. Right now they might connect interdependently, but they don't connect collaboratively. Uh, what I mean by that is they each have their own silos, individual missions that they're looking to accomplish, but they don't necessarily work together on projects uh, with a center liaison. Food Policy Advisory Council would be that center liaison that would help connect all these different entities so that we would be most effective when moving forward when we're looking at things in our food system. These are the areas of engagement. So this is one of those important slides. Um, this is actually the slide that you have as an example where you can take the notes. I'm going to touch on a few of these now, and throughout my presentation, I'm going to touch on the rest of them and multiple times. Uh, economic. Economics right at the top. We see a huge economic benefit by having a food policy advisory council in place. Uh, it creates additional local jobs, and it also keeps money spending local if we can increase local food production and people purchasing food local. Uh, one example of this is there's a Green Dreams. It's an edible landscape business that this last year they picked up full time and they actually uh, employ 10 people and they're expecting to have a million dollars of revenue next year just in dealing with the food industry. Uh, we also see that increased agritourism by offering unique products like the, the kumquat or even loquat, which you may be less familiar about. Uh, we also see uh, property value increases in our urban areas where we have community gardens. We've actually witnessed that people are getting what they're asking for for their properties instead of being nickel to dime down. So it is showing an increased property value. You won't be the first county to do this for city or anything else. We have uh, here, this is a slide that kind of depicts the food policy councils and their growth over the last 10 years. You can see in 2000, there was only 16 food policy councils in place. Now there's over 250 in North America alone, and 200 being in the United States. So you guys won't be the last people to do this, but you won't, you'll definitely won't be the first either. So you're not reinventing the wheel, um, but it is something that we can really bring to our region that no one else is doing. These are the current food policy councils that are in Florida currently. As you can see, they're all, they're all big players. Um, one thing that they all have in common is their big agricultural areas. Uh, this is something that we can do to help step, up us, step our game up so that we can be at that same level. We want to keep Pasco on target for being a premier county and the first in the region to have a food policy council. Another thing to note is Florida Commissioner of Agriculture, Adam Putnam, knows what we're up to here and is excited to see what we're, we create out of this proposal today. Now, why I propose this in Pasco County? I'm going to touch on each of these things. So one, it's absolutely an economic engine. Uh, it's going to create more jobs and to increase local food production with more, poach, porch, uh, with more purchases staying local. Well, a tremendous economic impact, just as we discussed with Green, green Dreams. It is proven that with the addition of green space, like community gardens, rooftop gardens, parks, it creates a closer-knit community and lowers crime. Uh, it gives people purpose and keeps other distractions to minimums so people feel like they have something to do out in their community when they have their free time. Improving and preserving a clean environment goes without saying that it will improve the desire to live in Pasco County, increasing tourism, and fostering a healthy ecosystem. We think we can do a better job of preserving our land and water while still developing and driving economic growth. In the rural areas, this is probably one of the most important things we can look at. Increasing diversity on farms will better develop soil and retain more water and reduce consumption and energy cost. We can look for ways to enhance and preserve our large agricultural spaces in Pasco County. It will strengthen communities by creating collaboration between neighbors and providing security during emergency situations, not just in the urban areas, but rural areas and all over the county. Many times the rural areas feel disconnected from the urban areas and vice versa. We want to foster unity between the both sides so that we can have one united front. We need to supply our ranchers and farmers with the information necessary to make the changes needed to be financially secure, like diversification of crops or how to make the best use of their water. And then educating the urban areas on the benefits of healthy local food and the economic benefit of buying this food local. 
Eating healthy local food keeps illnesses low and can assist in our obesity and diabetes numbers. Creating these green spaces gives the youth and other people to volunteer and increase their level of exercise. The sedentary lifestyle in front of the TV, eating junk food is one of the biggest contributors to our obesity numbers. Many people in our urban areas have little access to healthy food. Fast food may be on every corner and is great for on the run. But some people in our communities can't afford transportation and spend multiple times a week eating fast food because they don't have access or can't afford anything else. My daughter is 11 years old and she has two kids in her class with type 2 diabetes. This was originally called adult onset diabetes, but now we're seeing it in our children. We can look at ways to develop markets for diverse crops such as a low pot, and we can also look at ways to incentivize, not penalize, grocers for buying more produce local. Now, before we get into the meat of this slide, I want to define for you what it means by a food system and what we're talking about. When using the term food system, we're including all processes and infrastructure involved in feeding the population. Growing, harvesting, processing, transportation, marketing, consumption, and disposal of food and food-related items. This first step for an effective food policy advisory council is to conduct a food system assessment. We will look at where is food produced, how is it distributed, and how much access does the consumer have in Pasco County. From this assessment, we can begin mapping out our priorities. We estimate a thorough assessment may take up to nine months, but we will be conducting quarterly meetings to inform and engage the community on the progress and make, may make recommendations as we uncover gaps in the food system. Just quickly, this, this picture on this slide is actually a homeless feeding event in Pasco a couple years ago. Did you know that one in five of our homeless are veterans? People that went out and fought for our country and fought for freedoms, so and now they're, they're hungry and they need, they need assistance. This is a local chef at a new upper scale restaurant, Dulcet. In front of him, he's taking delivery of some locally uh, produced food at Kinship Urban Farm. Due to county local regulations, he is restricted on what he can grow at his restaurant, and this reduces the nutrient in the food since most, travel, most food travels 1,500 miles before it reaches your plate. Increasing his ability to provide local food will lower his cost, lower the consumer's cost, and also increase the health of the community that's able to participate. The picture on the left here shows how beautiful and edible landscape can be. Jim Klobeski is an urban farmer, and the greens you see in this picture could feed the whole block for weeks. The picture on the right is an example of before and after of green dreams of that Pasco County-based business I described earlier. At the top, you can see a typical Florida home with the palm tree, and below, you can see all the green and the, and the um, pathways throughout, and it's beautiful. Look at all those smiles. Those smiles are at Kinship Urban Farm. These are a bunch of kids uh, working in the garden. When a kid is connected with their food and picks broccoli for the first time off the plant or pulls a carrot out of the ground, there's something magical that happens that really connects them with their food. This is a community garden in downtown Newport Ritchie off of Illinois Avenue. They produced over 600 pounds from a 1,000 square foot lot. This is one of our largest commercial growers in Pasco County. In addition to the kumquats in the picture, Pasco also grows on large scale blueberries, blackberries, peaches, peas, corn, pumpkins, and has the capabilities to grow beans, loquat, carrots, salad greens, cucumbers, persimmons, peppers, squash. I'm sure we're missing another dozen or so. Our ranchers are producing cattle, goats, pigs, and chicken. Do you know the majority of these large agricultural businesses need to send products out of the area, sometimes out of the state for processing? The economic and environmental impact is huge. Let's attract these big businesses back and keep the money in Pasco County while reducing our carbon impact. To be clear, we aren't looking at restricting rules and laws. We are more interested in creating additional opportunities for growth. Funding is available. In fact, having a county with food policy advisory council in place will absolutely give you an edge when applying for grants and anything to do with the food system. Uh, we've even been approached by a farmer that's willing to donate monetary support towards this cause. Here's some possible initiatives. We want to promote the sales and distribution of locally grown foods and promote incubators that promote farming. A mobile market can be used to gather food throughout rural Pasco and then deliver it to the needed urban areas. Depictions of humans gathering wild honey date back over 15,000 years ago. Uh, unique products such as we're all familiar with the Kumquat, Kumquat Festival and the success it's had. We could also do this with loquats, and there's other unique items that we could do that could also do the same thing. Uh, backyard chickens, when was the last time your cat or dog brought you some food? <laughs> <laughs> At least that you could eat. Uh, public land use is an example of how we can take public property and convert it into an edible area. Now this would reduce the county's cost as far as maintenance. Um, now this particular example is, is great for us because I want to point out that it's right next to a roadway. 
this might not be a, a practical thing to do because of the stuff coming off the road into the into the the, the, the ground there. But that's exactly why we need policies like or policy council like this in place so that we can look at things like that and really come from an educated standpoint. Can we sort of wrap? Uh, America's waste. We waste over 40 percent of our food. Uh, we typically call it throwing it away. For those in need, we're using our biodegradable waste. Um, there's there's ways to use it. So we can feed people that are in need, and then we can also use that waste in order to rebuild soil and create places for people to grow. This is a seven-acre edible park in the center of Seattle. Um, this is a food forest. People can literally walk through and pick food and learn how to grow food with their neighbors. Uh, improving the access and the ability to produce food locally can have an incredible economic benefit and at the same time improve the quality of life for all our neighbors. A strong local food system supports small farms and independent grocery store owners, creating steady local jobs, driving economic growth, and staff capital stays within the county. We are requesting the endorsement and support from the commissioners for the formation of the first Pasco County Food Policy Advisory Council by resolution. This time I'd like to invite Todd back up to the podium to go to the resolution. So you laugh at the backyard chickens, but look what it has won. We went from backyard chickens to community gardens to this very cool food policy council. So I'm very excited. Again, Todd and Dallas, Todd and Dalla, uh, staff member, Long Range Planning. It's actually grown, and it's uh, it's not only grown from the initial meetings we had in uh, November and December with uh, Mr. Stewart, but it's also part of the Harbors Plan. There's an implementation method within our Harbors Plan, which is currently active uh, for community gardens, uh, rooftop gardens, community development features that are in there as well. Um, our ULI 2013 report uh, requested the preservation of agricultural lands as well as preservation of the agricultural history of Pasco County. Now, the uh, Food Policy Advisory Council is just that. It would be an advisory council uh, made up of professionals within the community, residents, that would advise um, the board uh, concerning their specific areas of specialty. We've had, uh, we've talked with uh, the Food and Health Department, we've talked with uh, the Pasco County School Board, We've also uh, talked with UF IFAS um, for agricultural research, as well as University of South Florida. All of these would be members on that advisory council, uh, which again would be picked and uh, appointed by you. And we, we recently, uh, um, Mrs. Baker and I recently had lunch with a, someone who moved here last year, who was the attorney for Walmart for food. And um, her business now, it, uh, she represents specialty food companies from overseas and is working on bringing them here so um, this ties in with that whole you know whole thing too so yes yeah, Susan Holler Hol yes. is the attorney that you're speaking yes. of and she has uh, showed great interest on, uh, on being a member of the Food Policy Advisory Council as well Mr. Chairman <laughs> Travis, thanks so much for your presentation. We had the chance to meet, I think it was about a month ago or so. So I fully support your initiative. I think it's great. I think we should um, definitely um, put this advisory council together. And anytime we can support local farmers um, and promote buying local, I'm all for it. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Mariano. Um, had an interesting meeting yesterday with uh, Juan de Sosa. Uh, he's got chickens in his backyard. And they had roosters, got rid of the roosters, and just got chickens right now. In Tonkin with staff, they say this is a low priority item for them to come up with this ordinance. So we're going to pass this ordinance, uh, this resolution. I want to make sure we're going to make it a staff priority right after we're done to get that chicken ordinance to come well, forward as well. Well, that's part of this, right? This, that would be this part will be of part of recommendations this. that come from the council. Yes, they would recommend on. Uh, uh, the backyard chickens. They could. Uh, they can recommend on ordinance for the community gardens, which we don't currently have in our uh, land development code. We currently have zoning issues concerning agricultural and residential and commercial areas. So that is something that the Food Policy Advisory Council will be taking on, most likely after the uh, uh, food system analysis, which could take up to about six months, which would be their initial. Um, their uh, initial project, just to see where the county stands con concerning its food system. Um, but uh, this this has such benefits um, in so many ways: economic, health. Um, I think 
I think as we uh, have companies move here, hopefully that have you know young, uh, young intellectual workers, they're going to love these community gardens and this this whole um, this whole effort. So. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thanks, sir.